Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is how we can use the actions expression inside of our business process tracking profiles in order to determine the result of a particular execution. Let's go. All right, so when, when talking with customers, I've had some questions around how can I track the success or failure of a business process? And uh, there is some additional work here happening in this particular area, but sort of in the meantime, this may help you along the way. Now, determining the success failure can have different aspects. And more specifically, I'm referring to you can have technical failures and you can have business process failures. So obviously technical failures, you know, that could be when you are, you know, calling an API or using a connector or doing an update and there's a technical failure that has taken place that results in the business process failing. Like that is a legitimate situation and you may want to track that and, uh, you know, make that visible. Now you could have another scenario, which is business. So all of the technical interactions work successfully. Um, however, you were still unable to fulfill the goal of that particular business process. So perhaps this could be related to a inventory, right? Where someone is trying to order something from you and there's no stock, right? So you're unable to fulfill that business transaction. Another situation where maybe you are need some sort of approval um, and perhaps the person doesn't have the required financial authority to approve that particular transaction. That could be another scenario where technically everything worked, but the business process is, is left unfulfilled. And so those are a couple examples. Now in this particular video, we're gonna focus more on the technical success failure aspects. And, and like I said, we've got some work coming down the pipe that will help in terms of uh, managing uh, success failures, whether those be technical or business. So do stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's look at what, how we can use the actions expression, which is built into Logic Apps, the workflow definition language. And we can use this to determine whether or not a call was or an action was successful. Just as a reminder, if you're seeing this uh, sort of series for the first time, uh, if you have feedback around business process tracking, do let me know. Go ahead and hit up this link, aka.ms slash bpt dash feedback. And uh, happy to uh, set up some time with you and further discuss your, your feedback. All right, so actions. If you haven't seen this before, this is an expression. This is uh, part of the sort of workflow definition language expressions that are available for us uh, inside the language. You can use these things inside of a workflow itself and subsequently that allows you to go ahead and use this in business process tracking as well. And you can see what it does here, um, the, the description at the top. It returns an actions output at runtime or values from other JSON name and value pairs. So, and I'll show you this, like how this looks in, a, in the demo. So it is important to understand that you will see all of the outputs that show up when you call uh, an action and, and you use this function. So we want to do some level of parsing so that we don't actually you know, retrieve the entire payload because that's going to be more than we probably want. So let's say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and query Dataverse. I go ahead and I query Dataverse and I get an output uh, I don't want to see that whole query output. I just want to know that that query was successful. So just uh, express some caution when, when using this particular expression. So let's jump into a demo and let's see this in action. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look into a brief demo here. Pretty typical or smallish logic app workflow here and we're gonna pull a message off a of queue. We're gonna do some parsing, then we're gonna go ahead and call an API over HTTP. Now we've got these compose. These are generally here just for like debugging purposes and just to help illustrate the concepts here. Now the, the two expressions that are, are useful in these scenarios typically would be the result and then the actions. And so when we talk about result, what we can go ahead and do is provide the name of the top level action that we wanna get the result for. So in this case, it's scope, 
right? So we've got, you know, scope in single quotes. It's the name of this particular action. Now, currently within business process tracking, we are in public preview still. Uh, what we do is we don't actually support the ability to go ahead and get the, you know, scopes currently aren't, they're, they're supported in the sense that you can track data from within a scope, but in terms of being able to access the scope through an expression that's not currently supported. Uh, but the good news is, is that we do have the ability to go ahead and use actions. And actions in this case allows us to be more granular, which is probably what we would want anyways, because you can have a lot of, of basically, you know, logic inside of a scope. And by being able to go after an individual action, that might be a better indicator of overall success or failure. But I do concede that it, it's probably very dependent upon your particular business process. So in this case, we've got HTTP, and uh, that's what we want to key off of. So if we go into the actions, we can then go ahead and provide HTTP, and that will go ahead and, and help us get the response of that. Now, when you go ahead and see the output, and we'll, I'll show you run history here, you're gonna see that there's a lot of data that actually is, is basically exposed to us. So even though I'm not gonna use them, I think it's an opportunity for you to go ahead and sort of just see how this looks. Right, so we're gonna use actions and action name. And when we get into the business process tracking, what we're gonna do is we're gonna access a property called code. Basically, it's gonna be the status code. Now, we could also use these other shorthand functions as well, or expressions, right? So you've got this body, and then provide the action name. This would give you the body for that output of that action. Now, in this case, that really doesn't help us because then we have to parse it again, but in some cases, it, it could be quite useful for you. And then same thing if you wanted outputs. So just a heads up that those do exist as well. So let's go ahead and let's just like take a look at a previous execution here. So here's a previous execution. Let's click into the run history. Here we can see our HTTP call was successful. Uh, we can go ahead and see our result, right? Our result for our scope. Um, you know, and we'll let's take a, a closer look here. So this is what I was referring to before, right? We've got our outputs, and we've got our outputs. There's a whole bunch of information that comes here, right? We've got all these headers. We've got this body as well, right? So this is basically the response from our HTTP call that we made. And then this is generally the, the data that we're interested in, right? This is the data that's going to give us an indicator whether or not that action was successful or not. And we can key off of either the code or the status, really up to you uh, from, from that perspective. And you know, so this, this can be quite verbose and, and hence that uh, isn't, we have to sort of parse this, this type of information. But once again, when we look at results, uh, or result, that's for like a top level object such as scope. When we look at action, this is more what we're interested in, that this particular HTTP action. So we can once again go ahead and click into the outputs here. And then once again, a lot of data that's coming here from an output perspective. You know, we're not interested in the body, right? This is the body of, of the call that was being made. Um, and here we can just go ahead and check the um, you know, is it okay and, and succeeded? So that is is more what we're what we're interested in from from that perspective. So let's go ahead now and flip over to business process tracking and take a closer look at how we would model this over there. Okay, we're in business process tracking. Let's go to the design surface now. Here, I really just wanted to illustrate the points. We got a very simple business process here. So here, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a property called actions. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is take a look at that particular workflow. So here what we've done is we've said, I wanna know when the HTTP action is complete. That's basically our workflow position. It's at this point that we would declare whether or not something was good or not. And then what we can do is create this property here called actions. You could call it results, status, whatever. And then what we can now go ahead and do is go ahead and get the outputs for that HTTP action. And so much like I did before in the workflow designer itself, I can go ahead and construct this. Now, this uh, question mark code 
is uh, basically what this is, is this allows me to access that attribute called code that is being returned or as part of the, the outputs itself. So this is I'm doing some like inline parsing essentially and choosing that code attribute that uh, you will see when you make these calls to downstream services from that perspective. Now, because I do need to go ahead and provide a ticket or a, um, a business ID, I'm just using this, this ticket number here itself. So that uh, isn't overly interesting itself. So in this case, um, this will allow me to go ahead and determine whether or not this HTTP call was successful. And certainly if it failed, you know, we could capture a different response. And then that would help us sort of indicate whether or not this was successful or not. So this probably becomes a little more useful when you start to craft your own custom queries against Azure Data Explorer, but this is one way to get access to that, that underlying data itself. So let's go ahead now, let's run a transaction through and see what this looks like. All right, so this is the, the payload message that we're gonna send through. Just note it's case 9912. Now let's head over to Service Bus and we'll drop a message onto this topic. Okay, I'm over my Service Bus namespace. I'm in my Service Bus Explorer instance. I'm gonna go ahead and send a message. Just indicate this is application JSON. Go ahead and paste this and we'll send this across the wire. Okay, we've got a message that has been sent through. Everything looks good. Let's head now back over to our business process tracking. And let's just go take a look here at the output 9912. And here, if we click into this, we're gonna see the value is okay. So we can see here that our HTTP action was successful and our status code is, is 200, it was successful. So we know things are good from, from that perspective. So that concludes the video. That's what I wanted to, to get out. I think it was just another example of how you can use some of these built-in actions to go ahead and determine the health of your overall process and then bubble that up into your business process tracking telemetry. Um, as I mentioned before, we are working on some additional capabilities to help you with determining the status of a transaction. So do stay tuned for that. But I think either way, uh, this particular expression will be your friend. So thanks for checking out this video and we'll catch you again on the channel soon. Take care.